Tutorial 6, Variables and Flow Control, Part 1. In today's tutorial, we will introduce two highly useful concepts, variables and flow controls. By the end of the lesson, our hero fish will be given four lives for four attempts to play the game. Let's start by loading MoFish 4 and looking at it in the simulator. As you may remember, we have a hero fish that can move up, down, or left. To try to avoid contact with enemy fish that are constantly created and keep on coming from the left. Still, the way enemy fish appear is not very realistic. They seem to appear from the middle of the screen. It would be much nicer if they appeared right outside the screen and swam into the screen gradually. In addition, once our hero fish touches an enemy, it is immediately destroyed and the game is pretty much over. We would also like to lengthen the gameplay and give the player more lives. These are the two issues we'll deal with in this tutorial. We'll start by modifying the position where the enemy fish appears. We already have our Y position set to a random height using an expression. It is time to set the enemy fish's X value. We'd like the enemies to appear in minus their width, which is immediately outside the visible screen. This is easily done by checking the sprite's width and writing it with a minus sign. It will work, but it is not very scalable. We would have to change the expression every time we wanted to change the enemy fish's picture or size. This is where built-in properties come in. Built-in properties are simply values given to us by the environment that let us relate to the current runtime situation. The list of built-in properties can be seen by pressing Control plus Space. This is the drop-down where we used the random operation in the last tutorial to get a random number. In addition to RAND, the list contains items which are written in all capital letters. Some examples are current time, room height, room width, and so on. These items can be used within the expression and are automatically replaced with their values in runtime. In other words, when an expression is evaluated, Room width in the expression is replaced with the room's actual width. And current time is replaced with the time in milliseconds that the game has been running. This is useful in various situations. Unfortunately, it isn't really what we need. We'd like to get the width of the current sprite. If we want to refer to properties of a specific instance, we must specify the target explicitly. Besides the built-in properties, the list also contains the support target's instances, self and father. Since we would like to get the width of the newly created sprite, we select self. We'll now add a period and press Control plus space again. The drop-down list appears again, but this time with different values. The values include XPOs, YPOs, and Z order to retrieve the sprite's current position, X speed and Y speed to get the sprite's speed, XXL and YXL to get the sprite's acceleration, and width and height to get the sprite's dimensions. For our purpose, width is the right value. We will prefix the expression with a minus sign. We will do the same with a timer event. In a future tutorial, we will learn the concept called custom event that enables us to avoid the need to duplicate our changes. Let's run the game.
The fish are now coming from outside the visible part of the screen. Now that we have our enemy set, let's move on to add lives to the player. We will begin by bringing our fish back to life each time after it is eaten. So far, we have placed our hero statically on the right, near the screen edge. Instead, we will now use the controller to create the hero whenever it detects the fish is missing. We will move to the room designer and use the grid to check the current location of the sprite. The current location is 200 on the x-axis and 208 on the y-axis. We will use these values later on to create a sprite dynamically. We delete the animated fish instance. And we'll now add a new event to the controller. We'll add the number of sprites event. This event is used when we would like to check the number of instances of a certain sprite currently in the game. In our case, we want to see that there are no instances of our hero in the screen. And so, we will select the animated fish at the top. Leave the expression with a value of 0 and change the condition to equals to. As I said, this event will be triggered the moment it is detected that no hero fish are in the game. Inside the event, we'll place a create instance action that creates an animated fish. To make the fish appear in the correct position on the screen, let's add a move to action inside the create instance node and set it to the values that we retrieved previously from the property grid, which were 200 and 208. Let's run the simulator, this time by using the keyboard and hitting F5. As you can see, we now have an animated fish that reappears at its original position each time it collides with an enemy. When playing the game, it may seem that the fish is simply moved back. This is not really the case. Actually, the collision destroys the hero fish, and the level manager controller takes care of creating a new fish instance. The player in our game now has an infinite number of lives. Let's add a bit of a challenge and limit the player to four attempts, or four lives. To make this work, we need some kind of counter to keep track of the number of lives. This is where variables come into the picture. Variables are basic elements of nearly all programming languages. They can be thought of as memory cabinets, which store values in the game for later use. Let's move into the global variables list and add a variable. We will call it fish count. 
we can also add a short description. Number of created hero fish. As you can see, the default value is zero. This allows us to keep track of the number of times the fish was created. Let's increase the fish count by one every time a new hero fish is created. We will do that by placing a set global variable action in the level manager controller right after it creates a new animated fish instance. From here, we may select the variable's new value. But wait a minute. We are not interested in overwriting the current value. Instead, we would like to increase it by 1. Checking relative will do exactly that. Setting the value to 1 will cause the variable's value to increase each time the action is called. Good. We now have our fish counter that increases each time a new animated fish is created. This is all nice and well, but still doesn't do anything. This is because nowhere in our logic did we pay attention to the value of our counter. To do this, we will use our first flow control action. Flow control actions, as one can guess, affect the flow of the logic. This will be the subject of the next part of the tutorial.